David Smith here with another Flip Classroom Math video. A few tips before we start. Remember that you can slow down or speed up the playback if that helps you follow along. You can also pause the video at any point to catch up with your notes or try the problems before I explain them. Lastly, you could turn on the captions and read my words going along below the bottom of the screen. Today's topic, the unit circle and the sine function. A lot of students struggle with this material, so I thought I'd just create a nice little video that relates the unit circle to sine, and eventually we're going to get to the graph of the sine function. And they're all connected, so if you understand one, you can use that as a window to understand the other, and vice versa. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's the unit circle. It's called the unit circle because the radius is one, and it's centered on the origin. So that's the point zero, zero. So it means every point on the circle as it goes around is one away from the origin. Okay? Now what we do is we look at points on the edge of the unit circle and we, we like to talk about them and actually we can use the trig functions of cosine and sine to do that. I'm going to mention cosine briefly but this whole video is about sine. Okay, so point P is on the circle. We can look at P's position as a function of theta as we rotate up around the unit circle. And remember, positive rotation on the unit circle is counterclockwise, the opposite direction that the clock moves. Okay? So P can be described by theta. All you need to know is what the angle is there, and you'll know the coordinates of P. And here's how you get that. Check this out. If we drop a vertical line from P to the x-axis, we have a right triangle right in here. So that tells us that sine theta is opposite, which is y, over hypotenuse, which is 1. So sine theta is just this y value here. Okay? So that shows up here, point P. One way to talk about it is x comma y, which is how we talk about coordinate points on the, on the plane. Um, and so if it's the y value, it's sine theta. So if you know what theta is, you can find the, co the y coordinate of P, like that. Cosine gives us the x coordinate in the following way. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so check this out. Cosine theta is going to be x over r, and r is just 1, so x over 1 is just x. So the x coordinate is cosine theta. So for all points on the unit circle, if you know theta, you know their coordinates just given by these two functions. And in class we discussed how you can take theta and go all the way around the circle. You're not limited to right triangle geometry. And this is the true essence of the sine and the cosine function. You might have learned about them doing Sokotoa geometry in right triangles, but the truth is you can take the sine of any angle like 200 or 390 or negative 70 or negative 180. You can take, you can use trig functions with larger angles and those larger angles are just wrapping further around the unit circle this direction or that direction. So this is a much more flexible definition of sine and cosine and it lets us do a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's map out this territory a little bit better. What's that point? You can tell from this diagram, from everything I've told you so far. So think for a minute, see if you can tell me the coordinates of that point. If you said 1, 0, you're right, because this is on the circle, so this is the radius. Our radius is 1, so that point is 1. We haven't gone up or down, so the y-coordinate of that point is 0. How about this point? What point is that? Think for a minute. If you said 0, 1, you are right. We haven't gone left or right, so the x-coordinate is 0. We are now on the unit circle right up on the y-axis, so we've gone 1 up, so that's 0, 1. Now take a minute figure out these two points. What are they? Okay, if you got negative 1, 0 for that point, you're right. And if you got 0, negative 1 for that point, you're right. Okay, so let's use these points to answer some questions there. So my first question is, at what value of theta does the maximum of sine theta happen? So think for a minute. First off, What's the maximum of sine theta in here? What's the biggest number you can have? Remember, sine theta is the y value 
So the maximum happens here at this point, and the highest value that sine theta can have is 1. So that's the max value. But let's just do that. This is the second question here. What is the maximum value? That's 1. And the first question was, at what value of theta does that happen? And we've rotated all the way up. That's a 90 degree rotation. Remember, the, uh, the x and the y axes are at 90 degrees to each other. So to get all the way up to there, our theta is 90. OK, so let's answer this last question first. What is the minimum value of sine theta? So using that same idea, the maximum happened here. It's 1. Now what's the smallest that the y-coordinate, which is sine of theta, can be? So we go in around, we're 1, now we're back to 0 like we were when we started. Now we swing down to the bottom. Negative 1 is as small as it's ever going to be. So this is negative 1. And when does that happen? Think for a minute. You've rotated all the way around to there. What value of theta is that? That's three 90s. We've gone 90, 90, and 90, which gives you 270 degrees. Okay, so that's the basic territory of the unit circle and the sine function. Okay, another thing that we do with sine that relates to the unit circle is we make a graph of the sine function over theta. So instead of being on the coordinate plane around the unit circle, we make a graph, something like this, where the x-axis is theta and the y-axis is sine theta. Okay? So it's going to come right off of this diagram, but we're looking at it in a little different way. This shows the cyclic nature as we go around the unit circle. This is going to show the cyclic nature as sine theta changes over the course of time as we change theta. Okay? So right now you might be going, well, how do I make that graph? You have all the information you need right here. Okay? So let's start asking some questions. What's the maximum of sine theta? What's the biggest sine theta is going to get? If you remember from that last board, that biggest number was 1. What's the smallest number that sine theta can get? That was negative 1. Now, what values of theta do we need to use? I'm going to make the decision here to do one rotation around the unit circle. So I'm going 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, 360. We're going to do that. So here's my 0. I like to mark my end first so I know how to divide up my axis. So there's 360. 180 is halfway. And then 90 is halfway between those two. This is 270. Okay, so now I've scaled my axes, so they're going to let us measure the value of sine theta, that's the y value here, as we progress through 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, and back to 3, all the way to 360. So check this out. What is sine theta at 90 degrees? Right off the unit circle here, it's 1. So that's going to be this point there. What is sine theta at 180 degrees? That's wrapped all the way around to here. So now we're back down to zero. Remember, sine theta is the y value. So that puts us here. How about at 270? We've wrapped all the way around to the bottom of the unit circle. Sine theta, which is y, is now negative 1. So that's right there, approximately. And then 360, we've come all the way back around. So sine theta is back to zero. Now it's a question of connecting dots. Don't make a V. Don't go bink, 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 because sine theta doesn't do that. If you have a graphing calculator and you put in this function, you'll notice that here's how it works. It's an even curve, OK? So that's the graph of sine theta as you move around the unit circle from 0 to 360 degrees. Now, that captures the essence of it. If you wanted to graph this out another 360 degrees, you could do that. And all it does, it's just going to repeat this. So it's going to go back up to 1, back through 0, down to negative 1, and back up to 1. And we could do negative theta. 
So if we start going backwards, we start rotating this way around the circle, it's going to go down to negative 1, back up to 0, up to 1, and then back down to 0. Okay? So that's your basic sine function as related to the unit circle. I want to show you one more thing. Okay, plotting points and drawing your curve to match the points can be challenging sometimes. So sometimes what I like to do is draw my curve first. So my sine curve is probably like that. That's pretty good, close enough. Now I can mark my maximum. There's one, and here's my minimum. There's negative one. And now I know my degrees. That's 180, that's 90, that's 270, and that's 360. So that's a little bit of a quicker way of drawing a sine function that works. Okay? Now if you're doing some kind of translation of the sine function, maybe it's higher or lower or shifted left or right, then just don't draw your axes first. Just draw your curve and then figure out where the axes go on the curve. Every sine graph looks approximately the same. So you can just draw that graph first and then put all the other information around it. Now that you've finished watching the video, take a moment to jot down any questions you have so you can bring them to our next class and get some help. You can also watch the video again to perfect your understanding. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button down below. And if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.